Welcome! In this tutorial video, we will guide you through the Digidot C4 interface. This video is based on firmware version 2.0.4. If you're running another version, the interface may be different. We will show where you can find various settings and provide a general understanding of how our menus are structured. Our free Digidot C4 app works in the same way and has the exact same menu options. Once you've installed the Digidot C4 according to the supplied Quick Start Guide or the Digidot C4 manual, you are ready to work with the built-in web interface. The homepage is the first page you will see when you connect to the Digidot C4. Depending on the Digidot C4 version, live or extended, you will see different menu options. This video is based on the extended version. When you are working on a live version, you will see fewer menu items because it has no options for recording, playback, and triggering. Getting started. Let's start with the Getting Started wizard. The easiest way to set up your device is by using this wizard because it guides you through all necessary steps to get your project up and running within a few minutes. It's recommended to use this wizard when you are new to our system. For this tutorial, we have created a simple setup with two Digidot C4 Extended 4 controllers. Step 1. Set the name of your project. This will be the prefix of the device name and will be followed by a number automatically. In this step, you need to select the output protocol. You can choose about every protocol in the market, such as all popular SPI protocols, like the WS2812S IC in this tutorial, and DMX. Step 2. Order your devices. In this step, you can place the devices in the right order. To do so, you need to push the onboard button on the C4 controller, one after each other. Once pushed, the status LED of the clicked device will light up to indicate its position. Step 3. In and Output Configuration In this step, you can set the total number of ArtNet universes or channels you need to configure. Please note that this can never exceed the limitation of your license. In this case, we are using two extended four licenses. Our limitation will therefore be eight universes in total. Step four, port assignment. You can choose multiple options to map the channels to the output ports. Step five, security. In the last step of this wizard, you can configure some options related to network and access security. The Digidot C4 is now ready to use. Scenes page. The next page is the scene page. On this page, you can play back recorded or generated scenes. When a scene is playing, a play bar appears at the bottom of the interface. When the play bar is activated, you can adjust the speed, color, and brightness of the scene. You can easily change the order of the listed scenes by clicking the three dots in the top right corner of the interface and drag and drop them in the desired order. Create Scene Page The Digidot C4 Extended offers two ways to create scenes. One is through generating basic effects in the interface itself, and the other way is to record from an incoming DMX or ArtNet signal. The Scene Generator allows you to create a static color or scrolling color effects. Several parameters can be adjusted to create the desired effect. After pressing the Generate button and entering a scene name, the scene will be created and listed in the Scenes list. When the Digidot C4 Extended detects an incoming ArtNet or DMX signal, the Record button will be enabled. The Record button can now be used to start and stop recording. When started, all selected devices will start recording their configured channels. Once the recording is done, you can choose how to save your recording, such as a loop, ping pong, or crossfade. You can even crop the scene length frame by frame. You can also use an ArtNet or DMX value to start and stop recording. Playlist On the Playlist page, you can create playlists that contain recorded or generated scenes. 
Add a new playlist by clicking the plus button on the right side of the top bar. Enter a playlist name and add your preferred scenes. Pressing the play button in the scenes list shows you a preview of the scene. Press the downward arrow of the scenes to adjust timing settings. Setting repeat to zero makes the scene play infinitely until the next scene is triggered. Global settings allows you to apply the same settings for all scenes in that playlist. Once the playlist is saved, it will appear in the Playlist Overview. When a playlist is playing, the play bar appears again. You can use the Next and Previous button to skip scenes within the active playlist. You can also change the speed, color, and brightness. Triggers are set up according to an If This, Then That logic. Click the plus button on the right side of the top bar to add a new trigger. All listed trigger inputs can be assigned to any trigger event. The analog input is the mini jack input port on the front side of the Digi.C4. You can connect up to three circuits, such as dry contact, zero to 10 volt signals, or potentiometers. For the dry contacts, you can select various trigger states like hold, push, and release. Power up is a very useful trigger that triggers when the device is turned on or restarted. The onboard button is the blue button of the Digi.C4. Time slash date is the built-in calendar function to trigger events based on dates and times. For example, on Monday 8 a.m., start playlist one, or every day at midnight, stop scene. Artnet and DMX allows you to trigger events using Artnet and DMX values from any console or software. OSC allows you to trigger wired or wirelessly from applications that are able to send OSC commands. You can create external custom-made interfaces for mobile devices with the OSC applications like Touch OSC or Lemur app. UDP and HTTP allows you to integrate with other software or show control platforms. In this demonstration, we will show you how to create an analog trigger. First select the trigger, then select a state upon which the trigger should be activated. Now select the event that should be triggered when the button is pushed. There's a long list of actions to choose from. In this case, we select Play Playlist and click Save. After entering a trigger name, the trigger will be created and listed in the Trigger Overview. Groups. The Groups page allows you to conveniently group your Digi.C4 devices within the network. This can be very useful for bigger system setups that include large numbers of Digi.C4 controllers. By doing so, you can quickly apply settings to all included controllers or play scenes in specific groups. There are additional options to show or hide individual devices or created groups. Many pages of the Digi.C4 interface have the option in the middle of the top bar to select all devices, an individual device, or a group of devices that you want to work on. Monitor. The Monitor page shows a wide range of information regarding status and performance of your devices and network. The Artnet Watcher shows the activity per channel, which is very useful for troubleshooting. You can also highlight ports and reset devices from here. Settings. The Settings page includes all general device and network settings in and out configuration. On this page, you can set up or change the inputs and outputs configuration, such as the output protocol, port settings, universes, and channels. The lamp icon will highlight the LEDs connected to the port to see if things are working as expected. Furthermore, there are some useful tools when you click on the three dots icon. Network. On the network page, you can access the Ethernet and Wi-Fi settings. 
You can set up a fixed IP address, activate the DHCP server, and change the Wi-Fi mode from client to a secured access point, for example. Device. On the device page, you can enter or change the name of the device. You can also switch the LED status or Ethernet lights on or off. This can be useful when these blinking lights need to be invisible. License. On the license page, you can see your current device license, which tells you the number of output channels you have available. Accounts. On the account page, you can enable or disable accounts. After creating an account, you need to log in every time you want to access the Digi.C4 interface. You can use the add icon to create another user with different user restriction levels. For example, a user, user role, is not allowed to change settings, but can only play back scenes or playlists. Update. On the update, you can see if your device is up to date according to the latest firmware and perform updates if necessary. Internet is required for updating. File Browser. This page is only available in the Digi.C4 Extended. The file browser allows you to view and edit files, such as scenes and triggers, on the micro SD card. You can also format the SD card here to clear all the scenes and triggers. Backup and Restore. On the Backup page, you can create and restore backup files. The backup can contain the input and output configuration, triggers, network, device, and account settings. You can export a backup file or save it locally on your computer or smartphone. Manual. This opens a complete manual of the Digi.C4 in PDF format. This is very helpful when you are on site. If you need any information about the Digi.C4 installation, configuration, or troubleshooting, you will find it here. This was a brief overview and gives you an idea of what you can find in the Digi.C4 interface and app. For more in-depth information, please read the Digi.C4 user manual or contact us. Thank you for watching.